Hello, Jamie. How are you doing? Hey, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I hope we got all the little glitches out and we're going to have hopefully no buffering. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that the video and audio are going to be good. I just feel it. We've done some things to make that happen. Eric, hello, sweetie. He says hi. Hey, guess who we're going to talk about a little after the fact. We just had MLK Day, but we're going to talk to the man. We are going to talk to the man. We are going to talk to the man. So That's how Eric says it. The man. <laughs> so, Eric, what do you think, dude? Can you bring him in? Oh, here. Done. He is. Okay, so he must yeah. have seen us coming, huh? Yes. Well, hey, okay. that's yes. good. Mr. King, it's a pleasure. I love that cadence. <laughs> he said it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. You're the king in my in my world, is all I can say. I have a lot of respect for you. He said you are full of flattery, and he likes it. Oh, good. I'm pleased. All right, first question I want to ask is, what was your spiritual mission here when you were here on Earth as Martin Luther King, Jr.? <laughs> um... I, I got to tune in a little bit better. I can hear him, but you just kind of get enamored by listening, mm -hmm. and I forget to move my mouth. Oh, sure. You've got a <clears> beautiful <throat> voice. It is. It's the, I, I call it a cadence. I don't know yeah. if that's a good word to say, but it moves. And um, <laughs> he told me thank you. He says that's probably what helped him get as far as uh, he wanted to go. That's true. People listened. People listened. His spiritual lesson on on earth. He, I'm doing it again. This is oh, terrible. It's okay. He says to make a movement. This might be choppy because I'm going to listen and then talk. It's okay, you can paraphrase. He's so nice. Oh. <laughs> like, okay, um, to to make a movement, to bring, to bring the idea that. Whenever you're looking out of your eyes, mm -hmm. you're going to be looking at the person, their heart, uh, their truths, and and not their skin color, not their not their human beingness. Mm -hmm. But you're going to be looking at their their heartness, mm -hmm. the essence of them. Okay. My spiritual mission was to get people to look at the essence of other people and not the the package that's shown and polished. You're still eloquent. <laughs> Eric says, if we can just get Jamie there, he says, we'd have a great interview. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Eric, you come up with a question. And don't be so hard on poor Jamie. <clears throat> I can still turn you over my knee. <laughs> I'd like to see that, Mama. Yeah, really. Um, he was asking MLK about his his death, his mm -hmm. assassin, mm -hmm. and Eric is comparing it to him. He was like, "Hey, you know about your death? You know, like you were killed by somebody else." He goes, "Was that the right timing for you? Like, what did you think about that? Now that you're looking back in your life, mm -hmm. and..." He just called him son. He goes, you know what, son? Like, reaches out and touches Eric's shoulder. Mm -hmm. He says, my death was not a surprise to me. Mm. He says, not only was I told by my God, and he touches his chest. He goes, not only was I told by my supporters, by my wife, by my people to support our message that my life was to end. Eric interrupts and he goes, First you mean, he goes, you mean to tell me that you knew exactly when it was going to happen? Like, hey, if you were to stay at that hotel, this was to go down? He goes, well, son, he keeps calling him son. <laughs> <clears throat> he said, I knew I wasn't safe there. Uh, I was told to move from that location. Um, but I announced to the community, I announced to all that I would not live in fear. Mm -hmm. And that was the biz biggest example that I could provide for anyone paying attention to all of the work that we had done, that we had stood on. Did I get that right? 
that we have stood on mm -hmm. is to not live in fear. Mm -hmm. So was I going to live in fear of giving a message, getting a message that this was to be the end? And he said, I knew my God told me okay, uh, that when my life was to end, that the people would rise up in my honor mm -hmm. and many people then would choose to fill my shoes. But as long as I stayed alive, I was the only one who would get in, who would get into my shoes. So it seems like that your whole, you, you must've had some sort of contract with your assassin so that your death could be louder and draw more attention. Is that true? That's what I'm getting. Puts his hand over. He says, I do have to declare that I love uh, each and every person on earth and that I do exude, <laughs> exude love uh, for my assassin. Mm -hmm. He says, whether we want to use the word contract or not, he says, I prefer to use it as a catalyst. My assassin was the catalyst for my message to be heard worldwide. Mm -hmm. He says, often, if there is such goodness in the world, it will lie flat until something, the shot, the, the pain and the drama, and it is that which catalysts the goodness to be heard worldwide. Okay. Now, what about you, Eric? What other question can you ask? We're going to trade off here a little bit. Um, Eric was continuing uh, with his death afterwards. Mm -hmm. Eric wanted to know if Mr. King was... <laughs> well, we know it's you. <laughs> Mr. King is also his father. Um, he's a junior. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny to hear him. They're like talking back and forth about his namesake. <laughs> okay. Um, Eric wanted to know, even after his death, did he follow the movement? Did he help it in any way? And if so, how okay. after his passing? Good question, Eric. He goes like this. <laughs> Turkey. Eric looks so wafy and thin next to, you know, Portly man. the king is coming in so dense and strong mm -hmm. and just got this posture and there's yes. Eric. <laughs> yeah. Get me back later. <laughs> he did. He did. Uh, his biggest concern was for his family. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> his girls, as he put it, mm -hmm. he wanted to make sure that they understood what had happened. Didn't make them a victim. Uh, and that was his biggest, his biggest drive. Yeah. Though he said, when we, when, when I looked out over everyone grieving, he says there was a, a tear in the fabric of humanity. Mm. And he said, you know, sometimes you need the great, the great divide, the mm -hmm. challenge to exist before it can be overcome. Mm. And he said, so I encouraged these many people to stand up, blacks and whites and business owners. And he says, from servicemen to politicians, mm -hmm. I needed to reach all, all races and all social statuses mm -hmm. to make sure that this was going to continue on. And he said, I had that opportunity after I had passed. Well, what do you think about race relations now, though? I mean, cer certainly, thank God, African-Americans have freedoms but there's still some problems um i love it he talks with his hands mm -hmm. i mean really talks with his hands really i mean they're out there they're strong gestures mm -hmm. they're not like down here and mm -hmm. weak um he says that there is still a tear in the fabric mm -hmm. with race racism and he says now it is no no much longer i don't think i heard that it's not as focused on equality mm -hmm. as it used to be, you know, where are their rights? He says, now, is it completely equal? No, and neither is it for women to men. Mm. But the biggest suppression we have now is how the race races are viewed. Mm. 
he said the African American community he says our black community is seen as as violent mm. and we treat them this way knowing it or not even when we extend equal rights we turn around and we lock our doors yeah mm. and he said in treating them in this way they will behave this way he said we have come a long distance but we have not finished the race yeah so what can we do what needs to be done that is, does this need to happen to get somewhere what are you moving behind you no i got spirits behind me Ooh. i am not alone right now <laughs> um he started talking really loud, and I was like, hey, so you're just speaking to me, right? Eric goes, no, turn around. We got people here. I okay. mean, spirit. Um, he just kind of leans back, and he goes, it all comes from love. Mm. Talking really loud. And he says, this is the way that we need to live our life. When I stood before in my shoes, I talked of equality, of seeing the essence of the person and not their exterior, not the color of their skin. And he said, if I were living today and standing in my shoes, I would preach to love one another. Yeah. If you... Is it me? Can I ask you to say that again? <laughs> <laughs> Can I feel like pressure on my back? We need to curl up really close to the camera. Oh. Back up, spirits. I know. We're all here to hear him talk, I guess. I don't know. We've He's never popular. had a crowd before. He's popular over there, too, I guess. Yeah. He said, there, there is a movement here, mm -hmm. and he means in spirit, and those dimensional planes. He says, that exist to support the movement on Earth. Mm -hmm. It is the walk of peace. It is the walk of love. Martin Luther King says that he stands behind other great people with the message as well. Mm. He's listing um, Gandhi. He's actually listing Mother Teresa. Wow. Um, he's got he's, some pretty good friends. Yeah. <laughs> Eric says, I know, pretty cool, right? He's like, yeah. I'll sit around a fire and smoke a peace pipe and let's talk about this. <laughs> I wonder what would be in that peace pipe for Eric. <laughs> he shouts out, marijuana. Uh, so, <laughs> it's what, got him laughing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Mm. <laughs> He's just laughing at Eric. He's so entertained. Uh, oh, Eric goodness. says, Mom, it's your question. Okay. Well, okay, so there's so much violence. There's so, so much. Well, what about the black-on-black -black crime? What about this whole police African-American um, struggle and turmoil that we have? What can you say about that? Um, he has these hand gestures where his fingers point down and he's mm -hmm. talking like this. He says, we have to place this responsibility on our marketing. Oh. He said, this police brutality is not just on the blacks. It's on oh. the homeless. It's on the lazy. Oh, yeah. It's on, it's on those without money. And he said, it's only those with money in our society that can buy their way to peace. Mm -hmm. And he said, I blame the marketing today for acknowledging specific cases to make it appear that there is an imbalance mm. in, in our culture for police brutality to solely blacks. Mm -hmm. He but said there is, there's a great goodness in marketing and there's a, a great evil in marketing. And it's all from the direction of which you share the news. Mm. Again, it's not about the skin. It's the injustice to the person, him or herself. It is the survival of humanity and not the races. Mm -hmm. He said, you asked me a little earlier about the black on black mm. yeah. violence. Mm -hmm. And he says, this is where I feel the suppression of... <laughs> Eric goes, shake it off. <laughs> right, right. The suppression of, you know, the, the neighborhoods, the, the communities, the oh, neighborhoods, the yeah. cities, the states, 
the the nation, the government and whole. He said it starts small yeah. and and the weight gets bigger as it extends out. And it puts these low income, same race. Um, he says you're specifically asking about the blacks. It puts <laughs> them together. And with that suppression of believing that they are helpless, that they are they came in as fighters, that they need to stay as fighters, and that we need to protect ourselves from them because they can never change their essence and who they are. He said it is a shame to every person walking the earth. He says they are missing the light in these people. They are missing their purpose. If we are not extending a welcoming hand, they will never know any better. Well, maybe if they... You, he said if you lived all your life in a dark room, would you even know to ask for to turn on the lights? Mm-mm. He said you would not. No. Well, in a way, I'm wondering, you know, we had the New Deal, uh, and uh, there were lots of social programs, government programs for the African Americans. And I, I heard someone say that, in a way, that's really been very hard on uh, the black community because, you know, if you, if you are paid welfare and fully supported, then, you know, you don't seek a job you don't stick with a family etc he's screaming he says we are not looking for handouts yeah but really they get hard. it they get it and i'm wondering if we're creating the professional poor in the blacks which is yes almost trading one plantation for another as one person said on the tv i heard <laughs> he said yes yeah he said you cannot go in and say i see you lacking and i will fill the hole for you yeah they have faith he's in them he says, you must take them from the community. If you need a counselor to come in and counsel these souls, you cannot hire them from the outside and put them in. Mm -mm. You take someone from the community who yep. already has that status of being a counselor and you train them. And you train them in that community where they have already laid roots so that they can speak to their community and yeah, speak to their neighborhood. Yeah, that's awesome. We must raise them, not give to them. Mm. And a lot of that is happening in certain communities, but we need so much more of it. How can we get that to happen? How can we help them out of that, that professional poor label and, and way of life? Uh, he's talking about better programs mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily have to be government funded. Mm -hmm. He, I'm sorry, I'm paraphrasing right now. <laughs> he's kind of giving me the goosebumps and <clears throat> but he, he's talking about the government having more agenda and more strings attached to, to the money that creates the programming that it's very difficult to give the exact needs to mm -hmm. the people. So if you have community funding, if you have businesses that get together mm -hmm. and come in and teach to those who want to learn, he says, remember, we are limited to any human being, not just blacks, sure. not just whites, any human being. If they do not want to learn, they will not learn. Mm -hmm. He says, we must mm -hmm. take those that are ready to grow. And we grow them and we say, now that we have grown you, what can you do for your community? Ev <laughs> I don't know what just happened. Uh-oh, what? <laughs> I almost feel like I got shocked in a way, but just oh. something moved. Okay. Uh, huh. it, sorry, I'm so sorry. Say it again. Everybody who is old, old enough to understand community. And he says, and this starts about six, seven years old. Mm. We start to understand community from church, from, from schools, from classroom settings, from, from after school programs. Mm -hmm. We understand we're bonded, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Yeah. And he says, once a person is able to understand community, it is a responsibility of theirs to give back to the community. And so parents, I hold you responsible if you were an adult, I hold you responsible for not asking yourself, how am I giving back? And he goes, I'm not interested in your money. I'm interested in your insight, your compassion to others, and the way that you will see the light and the love inside of each living person. And he goes, and I am not just standing here in behalf of the black community. He says, I'm standing here for, in behalf of all the people who are in need, who want to grow. Those are the ones I stand for. Well, then, you know, I'm very concerned that it needs to start in the family 
even before it starts in the community. And I'm so concerned about, about the breakdown in some African-American families with no father, um, mothers that are on welfare, some of them are, but still, it's just broken. What can we do? He's saying this is where it's so important to have community structure. Yeah. And he said, in my day and age, our community structure was built around the church. And he says, and as each decade grows here today, the church is not the center of the mm -hmm. community anymore. But yet, no one is standing up and building the center of community. Yeah. If it is not going to be based on religion, then we need a place to unite. Mm -hmm. Where is that going to be? It's not our schools. He said that is falling apart. He said there is more anger wrapped around schools mm. than there is support and learning. Mm. It's a shame. Hopefully that will change. But what do Eric's you think? going off on that. He's like, I agree with you. He says this bothers me the most. Well, Eric, what about you? Let's have a question from you. No. <clears throat> Eric was asking the good old question of what life beyond the Martin Luther King Jr. life um, did he pull from the most? Mm -hmm. Like, did he use the most okay. for this life? Mm -hmm. He clarified Martin Luther King. He goes, you mean the most similar? Mm -hmm. Eric goes, no, no, no. He goes, the one where when you died, you went, holy shit, I want to do that thing again, but make it a whole hell of a lot bigger. So the one that influenced your life is Martin Luther King Jr. Sorry. Absolutely, but it's like he couldn't think of the word influence. <laughs> he, Martin Luther keeps reaching out and just putting his hand on Eric's shoulder, you know. All right, <laughs> son. <laughs> like, he's got it. He's got it. He's showing me. I think this normally happens when we get into... Um, Past lives, they get into the imagery rather than telling the story. I noticed that. Um, but this is, the, unless you can show the audience pictures, that's not going to work. <laughs> He's showing me a life in Africa. Mm -hmm. We're in a tribe. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, no concrete, nothing. We're in huts. We're living in jungle. Mm -hmm. Beautiful jungle. I'm talking like lush, big green leaves, like thick. Um... He laughs. He said it was many moons ago <laughs> instead of saying years. <clears throat> uh, he was a, a woman mm -hmm. in the tribe. And he's showing me that there were four other outlying tribes around theirs. Mm -hmm. So there's five in a pretty close quarters, which means they were probably about um, 30 to 50 miles away from each other each. Mm -hmm. But... Um, um, that would be their territory to walk and hunt and pull for food. And none of them wanted to get along. They each had different belief systems, different gods, mm. different ways of, of living life. Yeah. And he said that she was captured and taken to one of the other tribes. And uh, she was meant to be tortured, but she was so inquisitive you know, why do you believe this? Teach me. Mm -hmm. That they loved showing her their greatness. Hmm. And they let her go. And instead of going home, she walked to the next tribe. Oh. And so she went to all the outlying tribes and, teach how they believe in things. and that they needed these red mm -hmm. berries at a certain time because it meant something for them. So don't harvest mm -hmm. them at that time. You know, when the moon, okay. the moon is here, when the sun... She was able to put it together and create a level of peace where they all were together and there was no more fear about going away from your village. You weren't <laughs> going to be taken anymore. Ah. Though it didn't create intense, you know, bonds and connections, but it was just simply by learning the knowledge mm -hmm. of the other people. And he said, when that life is over, I know I want to do that on a greater um. level. And he said, everything in my life, I know it's okay. Is that? Okay. <clears throat> I know. My room is full. Stop. Make those, make those spirits back up. Back up, spirits. Maybe it's affecting. He's telling them. Thing. Yeah. Tell them to move. Maybe their energy is, like, too much.
Uh, can he I, continue? He says, yes. He said, go ahead, we'll try. He's saying that everything is or, okay. We'll ask one more question after this. In great degree. Oh, did I get it? Dang it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's okay. When we finish, I'll recycle my router. Well, what do you think about, and this is the last one because this is getting pretty bad. What do you think about affir affirmative action? He comes back up with you and he says, you explain it to me. Affirmative action? Well, I mean, do you think that affirmative action has helped the, the cause or it, it seems like we're not having faith in them to. He wants you to explain. To to explain. How to qualify life and the. Yeah. yeah. It's not so bad. I see it as um, you know, when you have a job openings that you, uh, that if you're a minority, you get preferential treatment. Hmm? Because it's your best definition. Your best definition of what? Action? Because now, in your viewpoint, he says, "Do you consider this?" As yes. He said, "Do you consider this an equal action?" Yeah. That's what I got. That's, that's the only thing I can pull out of my. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would think it's unequal because to give another advantage to one set of people over another means that you don't have faith in that person. It means you don't have faith in them to be just as, as good, even though they probably are. He says it is a way of putting suppression into the society, is saying you don't have to mm. try hard enough anymore now because we have this law that says you have oh. a leg up immediately because of the way that you were born. He goes, mm -hmm. it is not equality. Oh, that's right. Eric, any more questions before we close? Mm -hmm. Eric says, I just want to know if I can shake his hand. Go for it. I'm sure he wouldn't he mind. Absolutely. He's doing one of those um, handshakes bro hug thing uh -oh. where they embrace. Eric is telling him it's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you for being so prompt and patient with us. Yeah, thank you so much. I've never heard you say the word prompt, but yeah, he's he's on time. Now, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this this film, even though it's sort of was glitchy at, toward the end, and because uh, of those spirits, we'll blame them on them because they can't get back at me. So uh, you really got to go to Jamie's site. She's got to, some really exciting things coming up, and certainly subscribe to her new let, uh, newsletter. So. Go to www.withloveandlight.com. That's right, isn't it? Yes, it is. Because now you then, to www. <laughs> www. You have to go to www. Channeling Eric, which is Eric with a K, E R I K, and check out Eric and Elisa's story. Definitely start at the beginning because you're going to get addicted and you're going to wish that you started there first. <laughs> That's everything that I've always heard. <laughs> Thank you for that. And we do have a lot of interviews of notable figures, but we also have a lot of, we also cover a lot of spiritual things that are very interesting. Uh, we cover things that involve the human experience. So bye, everybody. Bye. Eric says bye. Eric goes, Mwah, back. I love you. <laughs> bye. Bye. Let's recycle our routers. Bye. Done. Bye.